All right, back with some more Mario Galaxy. It's been a little bit. Played some Ghost of Tsushima previously and some Donut County, so... May as well jump back into this. I didn't realize until post that... When I started Donut County, I called it Donut Country. I feel like such an idiot for doing that, but... I said it, I think I said during or at the end of that game as well that I'm for some reason I'm very prone to calling it Donut Country. I don't know. Here's a letter from Princess Peach. Thanks for the one ups. I have a good amount of star bits, so last time I ended it off by doing this. And I can technically beat the game right now even if I wanted to, but I'm not going to yet. I think I'm gonna go up top and see what's in the engine room. Cause I don't really remember- I will remember them when I see them, but I don't really remember what's in there. Just gonna run around and get some one-ups beforehand, so that I have a little bit of life insurance. Eleven will do, I guess. Alright, so what you got? We have discovered an enemy base in the region. We can only hope they are not misusing the power of their poor Grand Star. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've... All the galaxies here can be gone to as well with how... How much progress I've made. Uh, hello, it might get a little rough from here on out. Just do your best and you'll be okay. This robot is in here for no other reason but to give you a vote of confidence. Thanks, Nintendo. Okay, let's see. Sea Slide Galaxy. I completely forgot about this place. This is one of the ones I remember the most. Gold Leaf Galaxy. Yeah, I forgot about I forgot about these, but these are ones you generally think of when you think of this game. Toy time. Bone fin. Let's start off with sea slide. And to give you an estimate of when this is being recorded, because this ain't going out for probably a week and a half or something. Uh, this is, uh, I I'm uploading Ghost of Tsushima Part 10 yes. right now, because it's a big-ass video. It's three and a half hours long. I think it's three hours and 40 minutes, maybe. And that's going to take, like, ten hours to upload onto YouTube, because YouTube is very iffy with their uploads to get high definition. If you're doing standard, it would be basically half of that. It'd probably be like five hours. Why can I go there? Let me go back. What you got, Toad? From here, you can see the ocean is a big ring. Is that it? Can't use a camera here. Whoa, I don't like this. I'm not getting vertigo, f well, if I look at the center island, I'm getting a little bit, but I'm not getting it by looking at Okay, now I am a little bit. Pardon me. I just ate food and uh, it was very pasta y. I think I got a little bit of some water I just drank in my throat. 
<clears throat> so that's the hooligan that's been causing trouble. Yeah, well, I'll teach him. Oh, that, that thing will eat you. You understand you're an anchovy to him. You, you, you'll, be, uh, you'll be a pizza topping. You'll be a mushroom on a pizza to him. He's gonna cut off that mushroom hat of yours and smother it on a good old greasy pizza. Okay, let's go uh, talk to this guy. I'm all pumped up and ready on a full stomach. I want to do the shitty Arthur Morgan voice, but I want to try something different. Now who we have here? You're some friend with those penguins. Let's get something clear here, Landwalker. This sea is mine, see? If you want it back, show some gills and make it through the eight rings. That is my attempt at combining Yashirobi and Cell from Dragon Ball Z. It is horrible. Spend a win. Ooh, there's a shell. No need to spin now. Ah, oh, thanks, bud. Now I gotta do this the old way. Ooh, Mario. Come on, man. I missed the shell back there. There's a shell here. Here we go. Got them all. Ah, come on, man. Not bad for a landwalker. Well, I'm a fish of my word. The sea's all yours, buddy. I don't like doing it. That voice doesn't really hurt my throat at all. Like the oddly enough, the Arthur Mor this one does hurt my throat, but doing it a bit more nasally, I'll absorb you as well. I don't know, just trying to get in like that cells mindset and try to be as kind of fat and obnoxious like Yajirobi. Uh, it doesn't hurt my throat as much as trying to be gravelly like Arthur, even though all these voices are shit. Although it does strain my voice, probably the mo- well, uh, I don't know actually if it does or not, but the Skeletor voice is probably my favorite. There's a Cosmic Comet. If I do any more stupid voices, I'm gonna need to drink, take another drink of water. <laughs> Underwater Cosmic Mario Re- Oh, this one can eat a dick. I remember this one. This- this star sucks. Here we go, though. Mario! Don't do that, man! The shell he's using doesn't look like it's textured properly. At least on the right side of it. On, like, the underneath part. I don't know why. It just doesn't seem right. 
Eh, just go up here. I missed the one up anyway. Oh no 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 no! You're not getting the star. You're not getting the star, man. Mine. Okay. In the past, that star has been notoriously hated by me for being stupid. Faster than a speeding penguin. You know, it's been funny. I've I've been re-watching a few of my really old vids. Like, I'm talking like the first and third and fifth Breath of the Wild ones and uh, videos and such streams. And it's so weird listening to my mic back then. Back then I used a Sadis Spirit Wolf headset. It was just like this $28 headset that I had gotten that had a good mic on it for what it was for the price. And it still sounds kind of fine for the price. That's the thing, mics are for the price. And all the Turtle Beaches and Razors that I had tried up to that point just sounded like Xbox 360 mics. This one is only above them in the sense that it had a little bit more bass to it, so it didn't sound as tinny, which is a big problem with me because I listen to stuff like that. And then I went to some of my more recent stuff and listened to it, and I'm like, oh, damn, I sound fucking good with this mic. <laughs> I've I've got I've become so used to this that I'd forgotten how basic I'll put it because the mic it wasn't bad back then it was appropriate is probably the word I'll use it was appropriate for someone starting out with what they were doing and albeit I'm not that I'm not a bigger channel by any means because I have uh, still got the same amount of ghost subscribers I've had since I started. Was 11, but my production value has gone up, and that at least makes me happy and proud of my work. For both not being a stiff and just kind of talking about things in a monotone voice and stuff, because I was nervous at the time and trying to hide my Chicago and Michigander, whatever bastardized accent I have, because. People from Chicago recognize, have recognized me as being from Chicago, and people from Michigan and Indiana and anywhere in the Midwest tend to think I'm from Chicago, but I'm not. <laughs> and yet, I don't really recall... I've only met a few people who kind of talk like me in Chicago. I don't know where it comes from, really. It, it is a weird bastardization of, like, two accents into one, where I can talk pretty normal, and such, and then I get into like this sort of weird city slangish kind of twang. I don't know. I've been mistaken for a New Yorker once, that was weird. We've got a penguin race starting here. Want in? Sure. Alright, this race is on. The accent tends to only come out when I'm getting either excited or, like, trying to nitpick or... Basically, if there's any energy in my voice, it comes out. If there's not, I sound pretty monotone, which is what a lot of my early videos have because I was still shy and skittish and all that jazz. Because I didn't... I knew what I was doing and I knew what I wanted to do, but I was just kind of starting out, so I was enunciating and trying to sound more normal, I guess. Whereas now I throw out stupid words and talk how I normally do. <laughs> and that's not something that I've really had to 
intentional learning. It's just something that develops over time the more you do something. It's like a job. The more you do it, the more you become comfortable with it, and the more you just kind of do your own thing. That's my life advice for the day, kids. <laughs> Let your freak flag fly. Be true to yourself. I don't know. Some some sappy stuff like that. Wait, 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 wait. Get back in the water. Thank you. I don't know why, but I thought I had to go up there and talk to somebody to finish it. 118.73. Nice. Here's your gold medal, champ. We finally hit it. The good number. This. Nice. That's some noise. You know, one thing I kind of am annoyed with the icon now that I'm noticing, because I would do it if I had the Wiimote, I can't turn the hand around. With the Wiimote, you could turn it around and have it, like, point in different directions and such. This is just straight up, so... Eh. It's a moot point. It, it doesn't matter. There's just a little feature that you can't really do with this version of the game. This one is a little time consuming, I believe. The Silver Stars of the Sea Slide. Mario, don't. I've been saying whoa, Mario, a lot more than I ever wait. Can I get an I might have to see that in post, but no wait. Huh, his shadow version of himself when you're kind of being blocked by something. You can see the polygon ridges in his model a lot more. Weird. Now you can see all the vertexes. Actually, yeah, this may be a good way to do it. Yeah, he's a lot blockier with his shadow form. Is there a way to maybe... Ah. If I recall right from the Super Mario Broth account on Twitter, because they do a lot of weird research into Mario stuff, I think this model is like a model that's inside the character model at all times. That's used to represent it. It's like a separate model or something. I don't know. That's just what I'm recalling. I thought I saw something like that uh, maybe a week or two ago about it. Yeah, that, that is certainly lo a lower poly model of Mario. There's a hungry Luma here, too. But I think I'm gonna do this star before that. I'll do the hungry Luma as the last one here. I'm not sure if there's one up here. There is. Get ready. Got him.
trying to pay attention to the amount of stamina he has for flying so that I don't fall in the water. Although that's, I guess that's kind of pointless because there are these mushrooms everywhere. I want to be professional at it, you know? The heck is this? Okay. I think that may be the secret star of the area. Let me check it out. Mario, pick up the Koopa. Can B Mario not pick up Koopas? Huh. I never knew that. That's unfortunate. Let me... Do that then, so I can try him. I never knew he couldn't do that. Like, I would understand Spring Mario not being able to, but... It's a bit odd. Ah, uh, it's just Star Bits, actually. Now, is there not one at the top of this lighthouse building? There is not. There's one at the top of the tree, though. Okay, the rest of them, I know there should be one on the center island. I think the other one is at the top of the tree. So let's go there. Or back here. That works too. I guess we can try the tree first. No, 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 Mario! Okay. Hey, guys. What does this do? Well, ain't that just handy. Where does this go? All the way back here, lovely. And then I have to get the, Oh, this is gonna suck. So if I fail and fall in the water on this big tree, I have to come all the way back here every time to get B Mario. Because I can't really get up there on my own to get that bee mushroom. Kind of need the bee to get this high up. Let me try going this way instead. Ooh, no, don't do that. This is going to be fun, I can tell. And Mario's underwater controls are not the best. He keeps spinning in circles the same he does on land sometimes with the inputs like that. Like right now I'm going forward and he's spinning instead in a circle. I don't get why it's doing that. It. I've been playing, I'm up to like, how many stars am I at? I'll check, it, I'll check after this level, but I'm pretty close to being done with Mario 64 actually already. It's a lot easier of a game than I remember, but I've had no problems like that at all with that game. It's only been this game. 
where you just put in an input and it doesn't... The game tries to do its own thing with that input. Even Mario 64 doesn't really do that. There is input delay in Mario 64, which I've had to get used to, but there's not some sort of attempt at reconfiguring that input. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. This should be... Don't jinx me now. This should be easy. Oh, I do have some fun glitches I can show that I recorded in Mario 64 as well. They're in the album. I forgot about that. I put one on Twitter and uh, some people liked it quite a bit. That'll do. What's your deal, Gramps? There's all kinds of hubbub in Seaslide. What's going on? Stay confused and old, old man. Don't lose that. That makes you special. Makes you character instead of just some random guy. Be the old confused man on the center island. Own it. Live it. All right, yeah, that, that was what I was. I thought it would be a bit time consuming. A little annoying, not too bad. I just had to get used to that. Not nice. We lost the nice. But yeah, so... For Mario 64, I've had a few things. Uh, what are some of these? I don't remember some of these. Oh, this was me. I had slid down there, bypassing the penguin, and it started jumping backwards for a long amount of time just to get back up there and start the race. That's what I remember that. Oh, wait a minute. Was this also the one where he... I gotta see the whole thing of this, because I think this is also where he cut me off. And I audibly yelled, you motherfucker. <laughs> I gotta see what this is. Yep, he cut me off! <laughs> he pushed me off into the abyss. Oh, uh, when that happened, I audibly yelled, you motherfucker. Oh, uh, I, that, that was, this game has been easier than Mario Galaxy in getting stars, but the stupidity of some of the crap because of how jank it is nowadays has led to some audible yelling, not in like a serious kind of way, just in like a God damn it kind of way. It takes a lot to get me angry. This, I didn't know what just happened there, but I was amazed it happened. And... This... what was this? I think a few of these were just like weird bullshit moments and glitches. I don't remember what this one was, though. I kind of wish I had uh, recorded these, like d done an actual playthrough of this game, given how much I actually pro have progressed through the game and how much fun it's been. That I got, I got hit by some invisible wall there for the log. That was stupid. What was this? I've also created a border for this game as well, so there won't be this black void around it, which is part of the game itself. It's a feature. For whenever I do play through this again.
Oh yeah, I was just kind of confused by that guy. I, I hit there and then I glitched out and started juddering. This is the piece de resonance, but what was this one? I don't remember what this was. This is... I want to say a glitch? Oh, jeez, yeah. Yeesh. That one actually gave me a bit of motion sickness even just staring at that one. This is the best, though. This is the one I put up on Twitter. So I just finished the bonus star in this room, and I was confused because I was looking for the area where you could get the one-up in the wall, and I was being lazy and not looking around for it. Then I see it, and I just try lining myself up and getting in there, and this happens. And he goes to hyperspace. So those were things. Uh, that, la that, that one is my favorite so far, just because it was out of nowhere while I was just doing nothing. Uh, I don't think... This is very retroactive, because I haven't played Breath of the Wild since early July. But I think these... Yeah, these were weird moments when I was doing missions on my own. And there's this one mission to unlock a shrine. I think I did the shrine on my own as well. I don't think I recorded it, but... There's this mission to get this rock meat up, and then there's insanity that's supposed to in un ensue while you're doing all that. And yeah, it was insane. And the giant rock that's about to fall down is the most insane part. There it is. And somehow... I didn't- I- I- I get hit by it, I don't get hurt by it. You can tell because my collision slides along the ridge of the rock itself. And... nothing happened. And I just took that up, took the meat to them, and the shrine opened up. Yeah, I don't think I've shown this before. This is very retroactive, but I may as well since I'm here already. I need to get back to Breath of the Wild, but I know that the main thing left to do is Koholint Rock, or Island or whatever, and that is going to be, I want to say probably two or three hours, maybe more, I have no idea. So, yeah. Back to the game. There's still the hungry Luma here. So I need to get all the star bits I can. I have no idea how many it wants. Say if 35 is enough. It needs 40. That shouldn't be too bad. I just need five more. Oh, there we go. Never mind. 41. This is going to be all right. It's one of these. Yippee! 
You just had to make this around a black hole, didn't you? Oh, this is the one I was thinking about before where you have to get every note. Oh boy. I'm already losing my footing. I'm going to have to put a lot of trust into these long jumps. Decisions were made. Do not panic. Oh boy, yeah, decisions were made. This is getting sketchy. Oh boy. Jump! Okay. I was on the edge of my seat that whole time. Ending note about my mic quality and stuff from earlier, just, just to cap it off for the foreseeable future. Is that not gonna lie, when I was listening to that, comparing it to what I do now, it sounds like I'm talking through a, um, like a walkie-talkie. Not in like a raspy kind of way, just kind of a, like an old PA system or something. <laughs> it's still better than most gamer microphones, but it's not, uh, it's not full. You don't get my full bassiness. Yeah, it, do it doesn't sound like I'm in the room. It sounds like I'm talking through an intercom or something. That's probably the best way I could put it. Regardless, I like what I do now. And it is for the better. Yes. Alright, so what's up here? Welcome to the Toy Time Galaxy. We Guillermo's are in charge of upkeep and maintenance. This is a playful place. Hey, Captain Toad. Whoa. He's having fun. Gotcha. What's your deal? My friends have been kidnapped. By that thing down there? Whoa, I did not even intend to get up here that easy, but alright. Yo. My friends are trapped over there. Okay. Can't do anything with that. There's a whole lot of gravity shenanigans going on here. Get in there, Mario. Thank you. You almost fell to your death. Yeah. 
Is this finally the first appearance of the spring mushroom? It is. It's a very strange ability, even when this game first came out, I remember me, a lot of people, thought that this was a very weird ability. It works, it's just Mario in a spring, and it's a little confusing to- well, it's not confusing, but it's a little unwieldy, if you're not used to how this controls. Because, like, he doesn't stop moving. Come on. Pretty soon, Mario, there's not going to be any platform to stand on. There we go. That was a good amount of star bits. Please make the landing. Mario! <sighs> well, I'm not going back in there again. I still have the star bits, if I recall. I haven't actually paid attention to that. Oh, that actually gets rid of my ability. Okay. I guess I can't hit anything. Mario. Mario, please get on that block. Let's try it again. Third time's a charm. Mario, you didn't... Hold, you're not holding your jump! I'm pushing the A button to hold down, and he's not doing it. Come on, man, work with me here. We gotta make you a star, we gotta make you big! Mario, you're gonna be bigger than your brother Luigi. But uh, he's a nothing already. That's exactly the point. We're gonna make you a something. Oh god, this is gonna suck if it shoots me with that laser. Get up there. I'm guessing I can't get hit by the fire either without losing the ability. Ooh! Ooh boy. Oh boy, he's down here now. Stay back. Good robot toy. Do not hurt me. I am just a spring. Like I said, this ability is a little unwieldy. It's funny, this game's been out for a week and I'm still seeing people bitch about how it's been... how it's an emulation and all that on a Nintendo collection. I get the mer- I, I've already said my piece about it, but I get the merited annoyance of it. But people need to grow up to the fact that virtually all of these kinds of game collections of any type from any company are emulations. So if you played one in the past, you've got nothing to complain about. You've already played it like this before. And I'm someone who's vehemently against emulation, but I understand how the industry works about it. It's not some new thing, and it's, Nintendo's not special about it. Just have fun with the game. Maybe that's all you need to do, just have fun with the game. If they do some sort of Wind Waker, Twilight Princess... Skyward Sword collection or anything, do you think that they're gonna be ports? No. They are not gonna be ports, probably. If they are, then good on them. 
for actually putting a lot of effort into that stuff. Because, like, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD, to my knowledge, those are ports. But they're also individual games. And that takes a lot of effort, and they took time to rework those pretty intensively. This is just a cobble together, like most collections are. So if they ever do a collection like that, 95% of the time it's probably going to be some sort of emulation. Like, individual games like Pikmin 3 is coming out soon, and it's not emulated, to my knowledge at least. And like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was, and all, all these Wii U ports have been actually ports. And that's fine, but that's also, like, treated as an individual project by their dev teams and such. It's like a remaster, but it's not a remaster. They have to reconvert it from, like, the Wii U to the Switch, which isn't difficult, but they gotta add in all those bonus features in the new content, man. They have to get back into the code and do that. With this, you don't have to. You just have to change a few of the controller settings and make a nice interface and sell it. That's all they do. Personally, I do wish they went with ports, but at the same time, that's not that's not standard. That is not without that is not within my expectations. This is just a holiday cash grab that they made for the year because of certain worldwide circumstances and they needed something. Aside from Hyrule Warriors and Pikmin 3. <laughs> and apparently from the Pokemon Direct thing that they did today, they did some sort of Pokemon Direct this morning. The only thing that I've seen out of that that was like, oh, that's something, which isn't even a good thing, is that they're repackaging Sword and Shield with the uh, expansion DLC. So they're doing what everybody expects and are selling a Pokemon game yearly is the joke. But also they're making virtually, in a preservation standpoint, in a collector standpoint, they're making every single version of Pokemon Sword and Shield that came out prior to that launch, which is in November, completely worthless because now the definitive edition of this game which will have the DLC on the cart comes out soon after everybody's already bought the game so in the future whenever the switch online all the servers shut down and such you're not going to be able to get that DLC until, unless you get that version of the game now, I'm talking maybe like 20, 30 years. I have no idea how long they're going to keep Switch Online up because they kept the Wii Online up for about... What? Wii Online launched in 2007 or something? Because I know it was not online when the Wii launched. That It was not online for the holiday of 26, uh, 2006. <clears throat> I need a drink of water. My voice is giving out. So they kept the servers online for what, 10 years? About 10 years? And the Wii is still one of the most successful consoles ever, so... The Wii U's online is somehow still up after almost 10 years, even though the console was a failure. So the Switch Online, I'd expect about the same 10-15 years, so it should be online till about 2030 or something like that, I would expect. But regardless, for any future people who want to play those games for the Switch, for some reason, if you want to, <laughs> if you want the DLC and such, you'd need that version of the game. And then copies like mine, which were the double pack-in versions that had like a box and it came with both of them and such. Uh, those will be the discount value versions of the game. Regardless, I ramble. I do. 
That's what you're here for, isn't it? I think I've already... I, I said that in Breath of the Wild. That's what you're here for, isn't it? That's the, that's the draw. Just to hear me randle, ramble about random shit. Okay, so there's... Pull Star stuff. Or Sling Star, whatever. Oh, come on! Let me get that. Fine, I'll get it myself. Well, since I'm on the topic of daily news... What else was there recently? I know there was something. I mean, Spelunky 2 came out on PC today, and it looks pretty good. I like Spelunky 1. I might play Spelunky 2 sometime in the future, but it's not on my list. It's not on my short list. Okay, I'm missing just one. Where the heck is it? Got that one. Oh, CD Projekt Red. So, just a couple hours ago, it came out that CD Projekt Red is going to be doing crunch for Cyberpunk now that the game is in the, like, what, half year it's going to be coming out? In, like, six months or something? It comes out in February right now, unless they delay it again? Which, in itself, was already, like, a breach of trust, I guess, to people. Because they lied about never do they they it's funny ever since Witcher 3 they have been Before Witcher 3. I'm not aware of them lying too much to the media, but then again, they also weren't very big but I Remember at, after Witcher 3 came out and they announced cyberpunk that they would never delay a game They don't do that. That's against their qual their judgment of quality or some stupid crap like that and then they delayed the game and then they delayed the game. And I think they delayed the game maybe a third time. I've lost track at this point. I know they've delayed it at least twice. Because it was supposed to come out in... It was supposed to come out in April of 18? No, April of 19? Was it 19? Yeah, 19. And then it... Yeah, no, I think they did delay it three times. It was supposed to come out in April of... 19. Then it was supposed to come out in August of 19. And then it was supposed to come out in March of this year. And then they delayed it... No, 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 I'm getting it mixed up. These are so, there's so many fucking dates with this game. It's been confusing. I'm still seeing people confused that the game was coming out in August. Like, people are still wondering why there's, there's, no, there's been no updates for the game. Where is it? It's like, yeah, they have. They just... They've done it so many times, it's gotten confusing for everybody. Even me, and I've been really looking forward to the game. So, the game was supposed to come out... I'm putting my controller down, I'm just thinking. So, the game was supposed to come out in... April of 19. Then it was delayed... Till August... Of... No, it was April of this year. Then it was August of this year then November of this year, and now it is February of this year. That is the timeline. So it's supposed to come out in 2020. It's supposed to come out in April, then August, then November, and now it is February of next year. So they've changed the date at least three times. I'm not sure if they did it previously. 
either. I'm not sure if they did or not. I can't think of any earlier release dates. I am aware of all of those, though. So where am I supposed to go? I was stuck thinking about Cyberpunk. Into the void, I guess. So, regardless, let me get back on the topic. So... People are already pissed because... They've already lied about that thing. They are known to be a little bit of a hostile company to their employees, generally. In, in like a derogatory way, I guess. Like most companies. What you'd expect of a normal company. Just, you know, your average employee, complaints about managers, all that jazz. It's, it's stock standard of, of any industry. But today it came out that they, they, they had previously said, about a year ago, that they were not going to do tr uh, crunch for this game. So they weren't going to try and hammer in developers to try and finish up production before it's done. They're not going to pull a Rockstar, they're not going to pull a Naughty Dog, they're not going to do any of that. They're doing that now, so people are pretty frustrated with them. And for me, I'm more in a questioning mode of... Okay. So you're telling me that you guys were supposed to have this game out by April of this year. And yet now we're in late September, early October, and you're pulling this shit. Where you're telling people that we need to we need to bum rush this, we need to get all this stuff done, we got all this stuff that's not done yet. Why isn't it done yet? That content should have been finished this time last year. In a management speaking kind of way. What are you guys adding that was not originally intended then to fit with the timetable? Either that or your guys' pre-order dates were complete bullshit just to get people to buy it. Because there is no reason, unless you guys have some horrible management there, that this shit should be getting done like this with Crunch. Crunch is the worst period for any game developer ever because you're having to forfeit your life at that point to get your job done and get a shit ton of work that was supposed to be done on time for whatever you have set up now. My question is, why wasn't all this whatever you guys have been missing for you, were you that far behind? I understand you guys have delayed the game multiple times. But... Like, I I'm just like, conf bemusedly confused and disappointed at this point. I love CD Projekt Red for The Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is my favorite video game. And seeing them pull shit like this... Not to say Witcher 3 didn't have any crunch. Frankly, I honestly don't know. I've never looked into it. They probably did. But with how many times that this game was supposed to release... And how many times... That was delayed. It's just like, okay. So how far along was the game in reality? Have you guys had issues? What's going on? You guys need help? Do you need someone to talk to? <laughs> Do you need a therapist for your, your promising of things that then just turn out to be nothing and it turning out to be a bit of a sham? What's going on? I don't know. It remind I, I'm not throwing- I'm not trying to throw too much shade at CD Projekt Red. I know things get delayed. I know things get weird in development. It's just confusing to me that at a marketing level, they were advertising this stuff so many times for these different release dates, and all of those turn out to be... There's only one or the other. It's either they were bullshit, or some shit was really not going right with developing the game, because there is no reason for you guys to be doing crunch this late in development with such short time. Game copies for a PS4 game, because this is going to be on the PS4. Game copies for a PS4 game have to be published, well, be sent in for development within three months of a launch period. During that time, they get sent into Sony where they press the copies, and 
that is where they get manufactured and sent out to retailers and stuff maybe the week before it comes out. That That's generally like a two to three month period that stuff has to be done. So come Christmas in January and such, those copies are going to be pressed. So they do have two months, two and a half months to finish the game. I just don't understand why they're doing this. It's just weird. I ramble way too much about this. Okay, there's where I was supposed to go last time. It's just, I'm just bemusedly confused. For such a well-renowned developer, they seem to not have a real grasp on time frames. Can you catch me, Bjoing? Yes, take me away from the stressful and intrinsic world of video game development into Mario Wahoo land. I would like that. I think I just have to wear him down. I think, maybe? God. Oh, I almost hit him. That could have worked, maybe. I've never done that before, actually. Hit one of the bunnies with one of those things. Long jump's a bad idea. I don't know what those question block things are for. This guy is not making this easy, is he? There we go. Bjorn, you got me. All right, then. Take this. If I sounded aggravated during that whole CD Projekt Red thing, it's because I want to like them. They made my favorite game. At the moment, I don't entirely like them for what they're doing. Just because it's very unethical and a bit scummy. It's a little bit scummy. I'll say that. I, I won't, I won't uh, praise them on certain malpractices with business. It's not good. Those developers are going to have to be there six days a week for like 24 hours and live there. That's not fun. That's not fun for anyone. All right, back from a water break. Cataquick to the skies. Ah, oh, looks like these uh, Cataquack enemies are gonna be the gimmick for this level. Should've assumed so with a name like that. I do wonder, who makes all these? Ooh, he got crushed. I know it's just a game function and they cycle on a loop. Once they hit the bottom of the world, they respawn up here or whatever. But, in a Mario universe... Ooh, that was a nasty voice crack. In a Mario universe like this, what is making those? They don't explain, they just come out of this hole. It's just a natural phenomenon. It's funny, I was talking to people on Discord about like the controls in the 3D Mario games and such, and how I personally rank them. And I gotta say, Mario 64 is at the bottom. It is good, but it is very clunky, and a lot of the inputs don't exactly work all the time from what I'm expecting spatially. So, I'd probably put it at the bottom. It's still good. It's not the best at some times. It gets a little frustrating. Then I would probably put this game... Because it's basically just an improved 64. Mario still has some, like, rigid linear movement to him. 
he's still kind of blocky in his movements is the best way. Like, he still has some sort of personal hitbox kind of stuff attributed to him. I don't know. It's, it's pretty much just an improved 64 in my opinion. Where, yeah, he's fluid in some regards, but it still feels a bit heavy and blockish in the way his body moves. It's probably the best way. He's not very limber or fluid. And Mario Sunshine I'd probably put above this. Just because he is a lot more fluid, he's a little slippery, which is what something apparently some people don't like about it. I like it a lot because it makes me... I, I understand his physics a lot more than, say, even this game where... I expected him to maybe, like, move, stutter a little bit forward in that jump right there, but he just kind of stops dead in his tracks. But I would have to put Mario Odyssey as the best movement Mario has ever had for his abilities. He's got great dynamic movement, and the physics on him work about exactly as what I would expect from Mario. He's pretty much a combination of this and Mario Sunshine, where he has a bit of a stocky straightforwardness to him, but you can also maneuver him in in better ways that are a bit more fluid. I don't want to say realistic for a physical body, but his his movement is a bit more diverse, and it makes him easier to control as a result. I don't know, that, that was my opinion. People kind of agreed with it, and it was, uh, it was fine. How the heck do I get back up there again? Do I have to go back to that cataquack? Man. I gotta say, this level so far has been the least intuitive for where to go, in terms of direction. Yo. Thank you. Like, I think I need to get up there to that button. But this cataquack doesn't launch me high enough. So how do I get up there? Can Mario be thrown by these guys with the B ability? I'm actually not sure. I didn't think he could. I thought the ability would go away for some reason. Let's give it a shot. No, he still maintains it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, 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 well. Okay, so I need the Cataquack to shoot me up there. This kind of looks like a miniature version of the cube in the Gusty Garden universe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh boy. Yo, get over here. Okay, so this way leads to nothing. This cataquack's actually kind of fast. I have no idea if this is the right direction or not. Looks kind of like it. Yeah, I need to get here. Launch! This is some funky looking geometry. Now there's a ton of them after me. Ooh. I guess that's why this place is designed as it is. Mario's running in circles again. This is not the time, man. That actually kind of helped. Launch me. 
Thank you. Okay, final stage of this stage. Now, can I cheese it? I cannot. Can you get me up this Jenga tower? Uh, it doesn't look like I can really get up here. Well, oh, nope, I can. New problem. I do not have a B ability. Alright, that solves that. There we go. When it rains, it pours. Uh, is there any other topics? That's the thing, I've, I've been playing so many games so frequently that I've been kind of talking through any of like my daily motion kind of stuff. Just the normal stuff, any weird stuff, any news, any game things, any whatever. I don't have many topics. I can always just tell a story like I did with Ghost of Tsushima last time, but... Oh, Mario kind of flipped out there for a second. So I need V Mario. That worked. I also need a way to get over to that tree. There's a mushroom. Oh, I remember something. So, I made a new channel trailer. And it's funny because I made it out of the fact that I had made one two months ago. And I lost it. And I had no idea where to find it. I looked for a couple hours through all my files, even through files that I knew wouldn't have it. And I did actually just randomly find it yesterday. And the part that insults me the most about it is it was in my audio test files. So it was in my file that I would have put it once it was finalized. <laughs> and I only found it because I had just finally moved that file for the trailer into that subfolder. And then I saw it, I was just like, channel trailer test, what is this? Oh. That's the one I made two months ago that I spent a couple hours on making and couldn't find again. Oh. Well, I got it. Good for me.
the only part of that video that was actually the same as the final one that I made, the, the replacement one that I had made, and my ability's gone. Do I re Oh, yes, I do need it because I need to get on top of that cloud. The only part of that video that stayed the same was the... Robinson the Journey bit at the very end. That is the only part of it that was actually the same upon reviewing it. Everything else was different. There was No Man's Sky footage in it. There was some different Red Dead stuff. There was different Breath of the Wild stuff. Keep in mind the video is only like four or five minutes long, but which it, it was actually longer than the one I ended up making. But I, I'm, I still think that the one I ended up using to replace it with was better. The final one that I ended up going with, I think that was better. I forgot there was a boss here. So it seems I just need to stomp on him to get rid of him. And now he's pissed. Oh, he's fast now. The hitbox on that thing is jank. See you later! It wasn't too bad, actually. So today I finally received the My Nintendo reward stuff from the beginning of the month that they had put out. I got my Xenoblade sticker sheet and I got my Xenoblade phone ring thing. And it was funny because at first I thought they were video games that had arrived because the boxes that they came- This is where the five dollars for the shipping comes into play. I thought that these were video games that I had ordered months ago from like Limited Run and such. No. They were in these big ass boxes that then you open up and there's just this little shipping leaflet and the stickers and this tiny key ring and they're both in separate boxes by the way because I had gotten them separately. And there, there's just these tiny items inside these big ass Nintendo boxes. I'm just like, so this is why they make you pay shipping for the free crap is that they put them in their normal big retail boxes for like shipping them out to stores and such. I've bought things from Nintendo's website in the past, and they always use these big ass cardboard boxes for their stuff, regardless of the size. And that is literally what they did with this as well. They just used the stuff that they had at the Nintendo online store and just shoved them in these boxes. So there's no real reason. I would I, I would have I honestly expected them to come in like little packages, like little paper packages of some sort. Like Amazon or any other normal place does, eBay, whatever have you. No, they came in massive boxes and it shows to me that they really were just being lazy with this thing because they didn't 
even set up the logistics to be any more different than their normal retail. They're just, oh, do the same thing as we do normally, just have them pay shipping, it's fine. Like, I'm alright with that. I'm fine with paying five bucks for the shipping, that's fine. It's just annoying seeing through it as like, okay, they once again were just being lazy with this. <laughs> There's no reason for us to pay five bucks for shipping. They could have just had... Like, they could have just had an employee go down to a Home Depot and buy out their stock of little paper packaging for mailing. For, like, spending... Spend a spend hundred bucks on, like, fifty of them or something and double that up by whatever amount. God, how much does one, one of those packages cost like two bucks or something normally? So you could have you could have bought 50 of them for a hundred bucks. You could have bought you could have laid down 500 bucks on this free promotional item and you could have had 250 of these packages. I don't know how many of these things they made, but I'm pretty sure that would have saved a lot of people on shipping. I don't know one, once again I ramble. I'm in a rambling mood, I guess. I'm all hopped up and energetic. So, what am I doing here? Cataquack to the skies. This is a mystery star, but... I don't know what the mystery star is here. This is an instance where I... I know what it is, it's up there. I saw it. Do you have anything to say? Those blue things... I need to get to that question mark thing up there. Or this. This'll do as well. Or that, I guess. No, Mario. Okay, so it's not the Bubbles hitbox, it's Mario's hitbox. That's gonna be a little annoying. There we go. Thanks! The... Icon went away, the pointer. Whoa, 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 I wasn't even near the top of the tree. There we go. Okay, that is done. That is done. So we got Toy Time and Bonefin. Not gonna lie, when I was looking through some of my old stuff, I watched a little bit of some of the Oblivion stuff that I did earlier this year. And it kind of made it, it kind of made me want to go back and play some more. Although I can't really do that right now. Mario meets Mario. Oh, this level. Yeah, I'd love to go back and play Oblivion, but I kind of, I'm kind of invested in a bunch of other games right now. <laughs> so maybe sometime this fall, if lucky, but probably sometime next year. I never did finish the Fighters Guild stuff. I need to do that. Ok, 
can't reach it. Oh. Secret star? 50. Yeah, I'll do that now. I remember that place, and I know that that has a comet attributed to it as well, I think. If I'm right. It has like a speed-up comet attributed to it, I think. I don't know exactly for sure, it's been years since I've played this game, but I'm pretty sure this does. In which case, that is gonna be a pain in the neck. So there's one on the underside of this. And funny enough with Oblivion, I've been paying attention to this project for years, just on my own. I haven't, like, contributed to it in any way, shape, or form, because I don't really contribute to projects because I don't have the expertise or the money to spend on something like that. But... I saw that Skyblivion is having like some sort of big update. Mario, why do that? So, Skyblivion has just, well, they put up a trailer about like what they've done so far for the past couple years. I've been aware of Skyblivion since. I want to say 2015 or 16. And I've been excited for that and Sky, uh, Skywind pretty much since I found out about them years ago. And I gotta say, they look pretty good, both of them. I'm more excited for Sky Oblivion because it seems further along and it seems like more effort has been put into it. But whenever those are finally completed, I'll probably play them and show them here on the channel or whatever. I have an interest in them. That's that's the best way I'll put it. I have an interest in them because I am an Elder Scrolls fan and I have I am a sucker for Todd's magic and this is not made by Todd in any way. This is made by the community. But his world is his and uh, Bethesda's world because it's not just Todd, it's everyone else who makes the game as well, which most people don't really care to talk about, but I love the world of the Elder Scrolls. It's wonderful. Where is this last button? Oh, there it is. It's on the side. So just because that was kind of out of nowhere and I already explained why I've been interested in such, because I sometimes talk about things out of context because I know what it is but other people do not, Skyblivion and Skywind are Skyrim mods of, well they're basically recreations of Oblivion and Morrowind in the Skyrim engine. And they are highly detailed with things like 4K textures, and basically everything's completely redone from the ground up without Bethesda's help because doing so would technically be a breach of a lot of legal things and they're not selling these things in any way because that would be the same they would get sued out the ass so they're just they're technically just mods for Skyrim but they're such giant mods that everything has been redone. Skyrim is technically not in the game anymore, and it's just Oblivion redone in a uh, high-quality fashion. Is the best way I could probably put it. Think if Bethesda... Oh, no, no, no! Think if... Bethesda redid Oblivion or Morrowind or anything with current generation quality, quote unquote. That is what this is. It's just done by the community instead. And it's free for whenever it comes out. It'll be free. So I'm excited for that. 
I don't, they don't really have an estimate as to when it comes out either, so probably not for a few more years. I have no idea. But whenever it does, I'll probably be playing it. I want to see how well they've made Orion and all the interesting characters like Maglier. <laughs> God, I'm going to hate Maglier again. This is not a fun level. This is very tedious. I thought that was the last one. Is there something over here? There is. There we go. Let's get the heck out of this level. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about Oblivion and S Skyrim and all that, I think this is the first year that I've not played any form of Skyrim since I first played the game. I've been playing that game since the 360 every year at some point. This is the first year I think I've not touched it at all. Has Todd's sway over me finally started to fade? I've bought Skyrim like six times. I got the 360. I got the Switch. I got the PS4. I got the PSVR. I got the PC physical. I got the PC digital. Yeah, I've bought Skyrim about six times. And technically I was given a seventh version. I was given the special edition on Steam for free when they did that. I think they did that two years... Well, that was whenever the special edition came out, I think. Was they just gave that to... They gave that for free to everybody who had it. So, yeah, I, I own like seven copies of Skyrim. In Oblivion, I own... Two. I own the 360 version, which is what I was playing earlier this year, and I own the PC version. Same with Mar- yeah, same with Morrowind. I own the physical for Xbox, the original. And I also own it for PC as a physical. Yeah, what other games do I have that I have multiple copies of like that? I have a ton of Witcher 3 games. I got Witcher 3 on Xbox One, PS4, Switch, PC I have digitally, I have the- I don't have it physically, the PC. And I'm gonna get the physical edition for the PS5 whenever that comes out. So, in the end, I'll own about... five copies of Witcher 3 by the time I get a PS5 next year, the year after, or whatever. I need one more. Where is it? I don't know where this thing could be. It's not at the top up here, I've already been there. It's not down here, I've already been here. Oh, lovely. You got it? 
No. Oh, it's up there. I forgot this thing went upwards when I did the screw on the other side. Alright, here's the real part of the level. You have to do this all very methodologically. I don't know why I'm slowing down my speaking. I almost died there. Brain is shutting down. Mario. Brain is starting up. Okay, that could have gone a lot worse. Fast foe. Yep, this is when all the enemies and such are sped up. Yep, I, I goddamn knew that this was going to be a thing. Oh boy, it's my favorite level again. <laughs> Only now it's on steroids. Well, it's kind of more just on cocaine. I don't know what these things are called. They're not thwomps, but they're some other kind of that species, if you can call them that. I guess. I don't know if these things are even alive, really. I've always kind of thought that they're... I've always thought of these things as being alive, like, animals, but it doesn't make... Oh, I didn't even die the flattening way. I died the crunching way. Oof. I've always thought of these things kind of like animals. Thwomps included, just because they're alive in their own weird way. Now I just have all the ones on this thing. The problem is going to be getting over there. Whoa, even these things are moving fast. I did not expect that. Ooh. One more group. Mario, no. Okay, that's done. I'm still not safe. Okay, now I'm kind of safe. Okay. That was stressful.
Bouncing down Cake Lane. Is this a boss fight? I don't think it is. It is. It's that thing again. I guess it didn't have enough of uh, me at the previous galaxy. Captain Toad, let me hit your ride. Thank you. Some oranges, some sweets. Got the spring mushroom again. This will be interesting. This ability is a bit jank, but it works interestingly in situations like this. Now is the part where I fear death. Mario, hit the button. Mario, please. Just do this. I don't think he can reach it. Okay, he can. Oh, are you kidding me? That's all it did? Here I was panicking, thinking it was part of the game. And it's just a bonus thing. This is a survival course. This is me trying not to die with these controls. Can he do it? The viewer will. I won't until it happens. Find out next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. I forget how the ending tune music goes. Ice cream? I like how there's snowflakes in the air as well. That's some nice detail. Lollipops? Can I make it? Just barely. Ooh, no, I don't like you. Don't do that. Don't hit me off. Make it. Ooh, this is all very tight jumping. <laughs> I'm very... I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. I don't know how I'm doing this. Wait! Well, oh. I saw the mushroom too late. Alright, time for the boss fight. Time for me to fall off these spoons and forks. We got a car, a school bus, a car, a school bus, a car, a car. You broke the pattern, car. Blow out all the birthday candles. Even though it's not my birthday. This is a second birthday. Yes, but when second birthday? Alright, the mole's back. There's actually a mushroom up here. I cannot grab it. Oh boy, I get to use the best ability in the game for this. 
This game doesn't have a whole lot of abilities, actually, if you think about it. It's got fire and ice, and then what? Spring and... It does have ghost, but that's barely used. Like, the one you see the most of is B Mario, which is not the funnest, in my opinion. It's fine. I think the Cloud Mario in the second game is a lot better. Great, now he's angry. Too bad. Get out of town! Can he get the star? Can he get the star? Cue the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure continued. Well, to be continued, jeez. Seriously. Hardest to get star yet, this is stupid. <laughs> Come on. I'm gonna get that one up before I get this thing. Oh, please, game. Throw me a bone, thank you. Oh, I was losing my mind there for a moment. These three are done. Bone fin. King fin's fearsome waters. I don't really remember what this place is. It is spooky. <clears throat> oh, is it just a boss fight? That would explain why I don't remember much of this. It'd be pretty... Yeah, I think this is just a boss fight. Oh! Okay then, Skeleton Shark. Yeah, I just gotta hit him. Uh, although I think he's gonna try and come after me now. Oh, and he has little buddies too. That's wonderful. Alright, where is he? There he is. That did not hit him. Ooh, he hit me though. I need to get that coin. Michelle. Got him. I think he's dead. Oh, he's even more upset now. Give me the mushroom. And the shell. Oh boy. This is not a pretty picture. over here. Maybe I can cut him off. Yep. Now I got hit as well. This is probably the most intensive boss fight I've done yet. Where is he?
Oh, he's way over here. Starting to run out of air. Is he dead? He's already dead, but is he dead again? There we go. Oh. Grab the star. There we go. Is there anything else? It is time for Bowser Jr.'s Lava Reactor. King Caliente's Spicy Return. Caliente? I think it's Caliente. I'm gonna go with Caliente. That's what I'll stick with. Okay, so over there is the launch star. Pipsqueak. If I give up any more Grand Stars, my dad's gonna get mad. So this calls for my ultimate weapon. Give him some heat, King Caliente. Oh boy. Fire. A lot of fire here. Can I reach it? Got it! Ooh, it's time to play some volleyball! So far, so good. Although it's raining meteorites now. And there's fire everywhere. Ah, oh, the meteorite was in the way. Nope, too late. Couldn't reach it. Yeah, this last one's getting a little bit more difficult just because I have limited space with all the crap going on on screen. Did I kill him? Oh yeah, he wasn't difficult. I just had to micromanage all the meteorite stuff.
Well, the engine room's done. I didn't even think about that. That went by pretty quick for me. It felt like the kitchen took forever. Same with the bedroom. The bedroom took forever. That went by very quickly. I love that. I can do... I can do any of the levels left. Alright. I think I've skipped a few of the Hungry Lumas. Did I do the one for the bedroom? No, I have done. Big Mouth. No, I've done that, yeah. And I can do the galaxy where I can get the star for flight. Will probably be the next one, actually. I'll get back to this Hungry Luma after I'm done with that. Need a thousand. I've got a. I've got three thousand. I'll get back to you soon. Then. Now, I know when I started this game, I said that this game, to me personally, is attributed with, like, the holidays, like Christmas and stuff, because that's when I got this. Back in good old 2007. And that still kind of holds true. I remember the other things that I got for Christmas that year, alongside this game, and the Wii in general. And... I got Planet Earth on DVD, which was a big deal at the time because that was expensive as crap to get on DVD. That was like 70 bucks or something or 80 bucks. So I got Planet Earth and Blue Planet on DVD. Each of those at the time were about 70 or 80 bucks. So I was super happy about that. Ah, oh, lovely. And I also got this big ass textbook about the Titanic. And I was very... I like that book. I don't know if I actually still own it or not. I know that I own the astronomy book that I got somewhere. I know that somewhere. I don't know if I still have that Titanic book. It was a good read. I liked reading that for years. And the astronomy one was a little dated because it still had, like, Pluto as a planet. Although I think that was a year or two after then that they... Cut Pluto's status. I forget when Pluto was. It was around 2000. It was the late 2000s when they did that. The Titanic book, I believe, was written in the early 2000s from what I remember of it. So it was a little dated even by that time, but it was good. I liked it. But yeah, I, I, I've always been interested in... Just that kind of stuff. I, I still love watching the BBC today, all the nature stuff. David Attenborough. Yes, that, that's that's the kind of stuff I remember with this game, is me getting textbooks and educational TV series and such. That's kind of been how things have been for me. This planet is very dear to me. I look forward to visiting this planet with the Lumas every 100 years. The Luma that's been traveling with you may also grow up to become a star someday. 
Some Lumas become planets, others become comets, and a few become power stars. I'm, tra I'm traveling with them while they look for a place to be reborn. But I never thought all this would happen. Wow. Mama must really trust you. Well, how about this? If you grab all 100 purple coins here, then you'll earn my trust too. This is a red star. It holds the power of the red lumas. But the really amazing part about it is it allows you to fly after you spin in midair. Yes, fly! While pressing B, you can pick up the direction you want to fly with. If you can collect 100 purple coins, I'll let you use my power somewhere else. Cool. Mario became... society. What do you get when you cross a mentally ill person with a society that refuses- I, I forget exactly how the line goes. Ah, oh, shit, I missed one. Let's go back. No, nope. come on, Mario, fly. I'm pretty sure the rest are on the ground now. You know, it's funny, I still have not seen Joker, and yet I know that line... At least, I I've seen enough of that line spread around to know that part of the movie and what happens. And frankly, it is kind of a disturbing scene. Quite a bit. That, that uh, blood splatter effect with the gun was very realistic, and that was kind of shocking. <laughs> Oh, that's useful. I didn't know I could do that. Just spin and kind of scoop them up. That's neat. Mario did the run around in circles thing again. three. Got it. Ooh, a red star. I have not seen one like that yet. This is probably the only one in the game. Okay, I'll try to do the two Hungry Lumas left, and that should be it for the day. This place has become quite lively with all the power stars powering everything up. That's something I like about this game, is unlike... Well, it did kind of do the same thing with Galaxy 2, with the big planet in the shape of Mario's head, which I still think is pretty stupid. But the, the progression of making this place, this hub world, seem alive is a lot more noticeable in this game than in Galaxy 2, where you kind of just get various creatures that just start showing up there over time, and they talk amongst themselves or whatever. This kind of feels like you're bringing something bigger 
back, and it feels a bit nicer, like more worthwhile. That was a lot of star bits. Sand Spiral Galaxy. Okay. What is this place? Choosing a favorite snack. Oh, this one. I don't have fond memories of this one. Can I hit Kamek from here? I can, but he guards it. Oh, he does run away further, though. Can I push him back further? I hit him again. Yeah, he goes back even further. Alright, that's fine by me. The more I push him back, the better, I think. He's actually pretty far back there now. I can't really shoot him. Ah, no scope. Yeah, there he goes. Even further back. That'll do for now. I'm gonna choose Boo, just because I have bad memories of using B Mario for this. Oh, no, 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 boo. Do not kissy, no kissy. Kamek. All I gotta say to you is screw you. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, boy, here we go. I almost fell off. Oh, I have to run with it. Okay. I was trying to run against it. Okay. Ooh, slowly. Off into the great beyond. Let's give it another try. Well, well, that was a thing. I'm not even upset at that. That was stupid. Oh, let's try that again. What? We'll get it eventually. I can't believe it. Mario can't stay on this platform. That is insanity to me. It's the same thing I did last time. It's the same thing I did last time. Mmm. <sighs> Okay, let's go now. They make it faster by giving you this ability to get through this, but Mario also has his own unique momentum for jumping in this state. So shit gets stupid pretty quickly, and I'm not going to try and risk anything anymore at this time. I just want to get onto this big shiny moon and get the star. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. 
Alright, so now it's just gonna be one more. It should be just one more for today. Uh, I think I should... Well, I'm just gonna go get this. Yeah, it's up here. It's gonna be over here. How many do you need? Still can do this one, I guess. Boo's Boneyard Galaxy. Mario, don't fly away. You can't fly to there. You have to launch to it. Racing the Spooky Speedster. They're trying to reuse the race that they did earlier. Once again, I don't remember liking this one too much. The skull is appropriate for this time of year, though. <laughs> so you're after it, too. You'll have to race me for it. Yeah, 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 here we go. All right, Boo, bring it on, man. Bring it on. I'm gonna spook the bejeebus out of you. Come on. Mario, fall faster. Mario, please go through there. Thank you. There we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, the springs don't do too much against me. Gotta get all of these that I can to make it faster than him. Did I win? Wow, I won. First try. Yeah, <laughs> 4601. Well, a promise is a promise, so take this star. These bones here are my kin. I shall raise them from the dead and make them my warriors for my undead army to take on He-Man and the other masters of the universe so I can get the secrets of Castle Grayskull. Beastman, write all that down. But why? I want to use that later when I'm actually confronting He-Man. Okay. I think that's about it. Uh, I want to see, is Rosalina's thing done yet? She's gonna read it. Let us begin. Chapter four. Oh man, I can't go back. Well, looks like we missed the first three chapters. I can't really do anything about that, no, can I? I'll read from here on, but in honor of my Oblivion content, which I'm still gonna do whenever I start it back up again, I'm gonna read it with my shitty skeleton voice. One night, the girl, pit, picture Skeletor is reading this to, God, who, who would he be reading this to? 
Probably some pers some person's kid that he kidnapped or something. That that's the kind of thing Skeletor would do. Uh, maybe Evil Lynn got like turned into a child somehow in some really basic plot, and now he's trying to cheer her up by reading her a dead time story or something. Well, there's no death in this, but. I don't know. This this isn't really a bedtime story. It's more a melancholy backstory thing. Whatever. He's reading it to her. One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked. Her mother's retreat to her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, "Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I've always watched over you like the sun in the day and the moon in the night." A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. That's some fucked up shit, Evil Lynn. Why are you having me read this book? When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have starbits in your eyes, she said, uh, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not starbits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, wah. Yes, wah. He-Man is not going to save you from dying lonely in space. The pair traveled together through the starry skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma. The rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. I hope this doesn't become the Grinch. I hate that story. Chapter 5 The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there. The girl said busily to herself, We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she's been busily busting ab bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only thing buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture, unlike any they had seen, and the girl used them to build a home. You see, Evil Lynn, this is called magic. Even you can use it when you grow back into a full-grown lady again. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big just for the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate. It was certainly spacious, but still something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here. The girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends! Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared on the horizon. It's that glowing orb thing in that one episode that was alive and it wanted to, like, kill us for some reason. Right, Evelyn? From the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. 
my mama. At once, the apricot luma parroted back. My mama, my mama, okay. Evil Lynn, I don't want to read this book anymore. It's getting weird. They're just saying that over and over again. The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. They're gonna eat her. I have a feeling that this is where the story is going. They're gonna cook her up and eat her in some weird ritual. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. They had babies. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. They're gonna kill her. They, they are straight up gonna... They about to kill her. I don't like this. The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. You sh Don't be laughing at this. You gotta run. What am I gonna do with all these children? They're not your children. What are you talking about, lady? The Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. She's lost her goddamn mind. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming all of them, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. How long is this book? Chapter 7, The Telescope? This is weird. I don't remember this book being this weird. After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my house planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. She used it to spy on He-Man in Castle Grayskull. I don't know. I need, a mo I need to drink some water to regain the fucking voice because I'm running out of steam with it. <laughs> oh. God damn. This sucks. This is why I don't read the long books in Oblivion. Is because it really does... It doesn't hurt my throat to do this voice. It just makes it so dry. God damn. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go sca uh, stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. I don't know why I'm getting whimsical with it. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on a bright and windy day. And... I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears and the Loomis did not know what to do. She's having a mental breakdown, man. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know that she's not there. I know all along that she wasn't out there in the sky. Because, because... My mother's dead. She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. Oh, that's fucked. You see, Evelyn, people die when they are dead. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Damn, Rosalina. That should do it for today. Okay. Well, Alright, I guess that's it then. My voice is a little strained from now doing the stupid voice. 
It's fun to do, and I can do it a lot longer than any of my other voices. Although, at the same time, it just kind of sounds like a generic 50s advertisement man. Remember, kids, iodine keeps you from getting goiters. Don't forget to get your Red, Ra Red Rider wagon at your local convenience store. Oh, here, here's one that's more appropriate, I guess, since I was talking about it last time about me being interested in a Kodak autographic camera. Buy your Kodak autographic camera model number one at your closest camera retailer. Supplies are limited, and the availability will be short because we'll be moving on to the model two in a year. All right, my voice is now tired. I finally did the storybook thing. Mario can fly now. Ghosts are real and Sasquatch is a legend. You can't prove Sasquatch is real, but you can prove ghosts are real. They are real. I don't know how they're real, but they're real. I'm, I'm being stupid now. So that's it. That's the game for today. <laughs> we'll continue next time. And I I'm curious, what even is this last area called? I don't remember at all. What is this? This is called the garden. Okay, we'll get to this next time. So yeah. Oh, that'll be fast to get up here then. So thanks for watching. If you've been watching all this all the parts episodes so far. And uh next time I'll probably ramble about more random stuff and make a fool of myself like I tend to on these and well, I guess everything. That's that's my job. Regardless, thanks for watching. See you next time, and hopefully I won't wear out my voice like I did today. See you later. Have a good night. Nah, I can't end on a stupid trying to be smooth voice like that. See you later, and have a good evening. Beastman, write that down too. War. Because I need catchphrases. I need ways to get one-ups on He-Man for his stupid obliviousness. He has the frilly blonde hair and the sculpted body made by marketers to make action figures. I have that as well, but I need something that separates me aside from a skull face and funny voice. So you think catchphrases is the way to do it. Yes! That's the way I'm thinking, my furry friend! You left the camera on, sir. Fucking hell! Where's Merman?